Welcome back to Guild Chat. Uh, Leah is still here with me. We are going to talk some about Guild Wars 2, Heart of Thorns story missions. What? I am so glad you made it into town. I know, I didn't mean to surprise you or anything. I, I told her she was sitting up here to get a present. <sighs> And the anyway. present is to talk about story uh, missions. It is kind of one of my favorite things. See, so that's good. I, know, yeah. I know you pretty well. <laughs> All right, so the things that we're talking about today is just the differences we've made in story missions, making the player more a part of it, giving the player more choices. Mm -hmm. And we're going to kick that off with a quick run through of one of the first story missions. If you've participated in the beta weekend events up to now, you've seen this. And this is a really good illustration of all of the things that you and the narrative team have done. Yeah, and it's, it's it, it, there's a, there's so much that we're just like, oh, where do we even start? <laughs> so yeah, I think it'll be nice to kind of look at the video, see some things, so we can point at those. But absolutely, the narrative team had a real desire, um, also working not just the folks on the narrative team, but the folks in design, the folks in all these other areas who really wanted to make sure that the player is feeling like they are the commander, they're in charge, mm -hmm. they're really doing a lot of things, and and that their choices matter, and that they're experience and their actions in this game matter. Um, and yeah, I think this is a really good example. Yeah, let's and we can start it off by seeing how much more involved the player is in the choices that you get. So let's take a look at the video. Stay sharp, people. Modromoth hit the pact hard. It's up to us to pick up the pieces. So much wreckage. I was expecting carnage, but this. Mordromoth actually took down the entire fleet. Spirits. Could anyone have survived? We need to get down there, fast! I see a camp. And a camp means survivors. Let's go! Rem! Get back here! I'm heir Stagolkin's son. I want to know where she is. Rem, you mustn't run off like that. We're in enemy territory. Larenthir, glad to see you survived. I need a status report, now. You're a welcome sight, Commander. The situation is grim. Mordormoth tore the fleet apart. The Pact is in ruins. Traherne and Destiny's Edge were taken prisoner. They were alive, but now MIA. And the remaining soldiers no longer trust me. And you're surprised? Scarlet, Aaron, and now this? Mordromoth always uses Silvari to do its dirtiest dirty work. We need to strengthen the defenses around here. Our priority has to be salvaging weapon parts from the crash sites. What about our comrades in the cavern? The Pact does not abandon its own. Look around, sir. There is no more Pact, and the prisoners you want to save are probably already dead. Think it through, soldier. We need greater numbers, or any salvage party we send will disappear like the others. This isn't helping. Just tell us where Destiny's Edge is, please. Laren there. Stand by. I believe you're still on our side, but I need to think this through. Larenthir's right this time. We have to rescue the Pact prisoners. It's both logical and our duty. Destiny's Edge were taken prisoner too. Rescuing Larenthir's soldiers might help us pick up the trail. Let's focus on protecting the soldiers we still have. I say we scare up some turret parts to defend this position. supplies and salvage to build up this position, or we're all gonna die.
Everyone, listen up. We've suffered a serious setback, but we're far from beaten. I trust Larenthir. If you trust me, you can trust him. We're all still on the same side. Understood? Yes, Commander. Larenthir will join the search and rescue team. If you're not on that team, dig in and fortify this position. Now fall in and let's get to work. It's not worth risking more lives to save Silvari prisoners. They're already gone. Silvari belonged to Mortronoth. You're a fool. Only weak-willed Silvari are vulnerable. The rest of us, myself and the Commander especially, fight back. He's right. Mordromoth wants us to turn on each other. Are you going to play right into the enemy's hands? Uh, no. But who says you're not the enemy? Gunnard, Gat, come on. We're better off on our own. Count me out of your tiny mutiny. My duty is to my fellow soldiers. I'm staying. It's your funeral. This camp won't last another night. Good luck. You're gonna need it. Sharpen your blades and guard your vitals. I'm back. Joining in, Commander. It looked like you could use some help. Tribune? You're alive! But where have you been? And what's that new magic you're using? Later, Cub. All you need to know is that I'm back, and I'm better than ever. Right now, we've got comrades to rescue and dragon minions to kill. Ritlock's right. We need to find Destiny's Edge and hit Mordremoth where it lives. Let's go, Tribune. Time for us to kill another Elder Dragon. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. There's so much to talk about. So yeah. the, the community team grabbed some of the things they were really excited to talk about and put this together. It's the first time I'm seeing it all pulled together, which is cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's so Ramon many things the, to look at. Uh, Ramon on the European side of our community team did a lot of work on this. So big congratulations to Ramon and thanks, thanks Ramon. for the work. Yeah. yeah. So you have, you have multiple choices that you can take, different paths you can take. You have NPCs pitching in their opinions and letting you know what they think. And special shout out to the tiny mutiny, Asura. <laughs> we were like, we were looking at each mutiny. other and laughing while that was going on. Yeah, that was a good such line. a great line. <laughs> so, where do you even where do you even begin to put this together from a technical standpoint? Uh, well, we came at this uh, next story just saying, hey, while we know we it is going to pick up really right after season two ended, you know, you yeah, really this are... Yeah, is, this is a continuation of the story with no pause. Absolutely, but we also knew that there were some things that we wanted to do to help even improve that player experience, and so there's a variety of things that you'll see in there. One of them um, that is new for this is there's the optional sort of discussion mm -hmm. icon that we're using a lot more in this, so you have the ability in that instance where you're being asked to make a choice one from the other, you could just make a choice based on your gut instinct, mm -hmm. or you have the option to go around and talk to various people, get their input um, and understand. So that can be as in-depth as you want it to be. It could be faster. It could be more like, no, I know that this is what feels yeah. right to me immediately. And that, I think, is really big because... Well, it's something I appreciate because I really, I personally, in my gameplay, I like that kind of thing. I want to know what's going on and I really like to delve into the story. I know not everybody does. Some people just want to get to the fighting part. Exactly. And I like that we've made it so that can happen. And we want to enable that. So it's entirely possible not to go um, and talk with any of those people who have that optional thing. You can just make your choice right away. But I do like the fact that we then give different play styles and different amount of some people do. They want to see, they want to turn over every rock and say, does this have a message? Is this person yeah. going to talk to me? Is this thing going to give me some great piece of information? So they're going to go poke around a lot more things than other people do. They just want to progress the story. They want to move on, they want to get the big pieces, and I think right. that's one of those things that we've given 
as a great option that we're using whenever we can. Um, and of course, putting in player choice. Um, and player choice, I think, comes in a lot of different packages. I love the fact that that clip had a Silvari player character. Um, and it was like, very important to me that we had, it was yeah. a Silvari. And what is interesting is that's a choice people probably made, depending on when you joined the game, you could have made that choice three years ago. But that choice absolutely has an impact on what's going on in this particular game. And, and so having those choice moments, but also really building upon things that you've done in your past as a character was important to us as well. Um, other things that you'll notice about some of the technical pieces there is you saw the beginning, the characters now have the ability to walk and talk in a Yay. way that they, they really couldn't before. And it seems like kind of a minor thing, but it so it's isn't. It's more complicated, so much yeah. more complicated it than it It takes a lot of bandwidth. It does a very, you know, various things about how our engine is built and stuff. We really had to think about um, how can we make this effective. But I love the fact that you are creating a story, your character's talking, other characters are talking to you while you're in the action. Because you, it's to me so much more satisfying to have that information all delivered to you while you're in the midst of gameplay, while you're in the midst of action and moving from one place to another. Because it's so much more natural. It's so much more the way we all live. Granted, we're probably not in a dragon-infested jungle, you know, fighting off those, I know. <laughs> Isn't that good for us? Uh, but at the same time, you don't just stand and have a conversation and then go right. do something. It's so much cooler that you can actually be doing it while the gameplay is going on. Yeah, and I know players. I know players like that. I think that was something that you noticed and you probably enjoyed as much as me when players started realizing that this was happening. Yeah, it was a huge deal and they were super happy about it. Yeah, and not to mention the other thing that players are really loving is the fact that player character voice yes. is back. So you know, we just had this awesome segment from Jennifer Hale. I hope everyone got a chance. That was fun. To, to tune into our cooking show. Um, but, you know, she plays the Silvari female character, mm -hmm. and there is that um, just awesomeness that comes when you know, oh, when I started off playing this game, this was the character that I was working with. And, and it just it feels kind of like coming home, and it really is part of that, giving that sense of player character agency and how important it is for the player character to be the one sort of leading the action, making right. the decisions, making the choices, and giving them a voice is a big part of that. So it's something that we're really excited that we are able to bring back um, into the game now. Yeah, well, these are your characters, and the more they can do, and the more, like you said, player agency, the more they can do as far as that goes, the better it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think the amount of work it took to put that in there was totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. It's, it is tougher because you think about the fact every time you have a player character say a line, there are 10 actors just in English who have to say that line. And yep. of course, we're not just recording this game in English. We do this in foreign mm -hmm. languages. And that's, so it exponentially in, in yeah. increases it. And of course, you're writing variations for things mm -hmm. because it's not the case that an Asura is going to say the same thing as a Char, is going right. to say the same thing as a Silvari all the time. And so, um, but that, you know, I will say that stuff that the narrative team gets so excited about right? is when they get the chance to, to really bring life to that player character that really is. You're playing a role. You want that player character to be doing something different. You want that because of the choices that you've made on your gender, on your race, on your profession, on your all those kind of things, you know, um, that is something we tried to play a lot with um, in this. And so it's, uh, I think that's a really good example of a few of the ways that we're able to, I think, make that come uh, into fruition mm -hmm. a lot more. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned the Silvari player character and how important that was, and we talked about that just a little while ago. Yeah. This conflict that's coming internally inside the game with player characters who are Silvari and maybe not as trusted by other by other player characters and other NPCs as much. It, how, again, I, I just keep asking this because it's, how did you even begin figuring out how to make that work without it feeling like it's just shoehorned in there? Mm, well, goodness, I think because it's so natural to where we are in the story right now <laughs> that Silvari are having a really different experience. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the ideas 
as we were sitting around in brainstorming meetings and everything, a lot of them kind of present themselves. And that's when you know that you've got something special and you've done a good job both with your your world building, your lore, but also the characters and the position of, of how they relate to the world when a lot of things the ideas just start to come kind of naturally and you start to realize what if oh this would be a great place for something different to happen if you're a Silvari or something different to happen if you're an Asura, someplace different to happen if you're a Char, whatever the case may be. Um, and even we do do a bit of profession variation and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that naturally comes, even the, the portion that uh, you had in the video there, that um, the way that all plays out and the way people respond to you, um, particularly there obviously was the the char NPC who oh, yeah. is, is not a big fan of Larenthir and not a big fan of Silvari at this point. Mm -hmm. And you kind of understand why. You right. know, there's a real logical reason for people to distrust Silvari. Yeah, look around at yeah, the yeah, wreckage, yeah. man. If you play that with a Silvari character, you do get a sense of how that plays. When you play it with a non-Silvari, it plays out differently than that. And mm -hmm. it's something I don't want to get too into it. You should play you should all play this out. as both. Um, but it's, you know, lots of little moments like that that we found throughout the entire game that just really pepper in a different experience. Right, and it just, it matters. It's not just, this is how my character is shaped. Totally matters. Yeah. yeah. So, something that we've talked about quite a lot over the past year or so is the storytelling in the game. We have the storytelling in the open world, and then we have instanced mm -hmm. storytelling. And these are different things, and it's something that we've been working with for quite a while. Absolutely. When... <laughs> One of my, I was like, one of my <laughs> missions, I think, um, when I came and joined Guild Wars is, is ideally I want people to think about the story as being something that is part of the totality of the experience. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think personally that story is more important than gameplay or less important or that the art should override the audio or whatever. It right. all comes together to make one really great experience. Right. And in line with that, I think it's really important that we also are making sure that we're kind of telling story in all the ways that we have available to us. And so when a person, say, would get an episode of you know, season two, a lot of times people think of, okay, well, what that is is there are these, say, three story instances that I will go to and I'll follow the green star and I'll right. go there and I get to the end of it and it's done, but they're really both in those seasons, of course, but as we're looking at Heart of Thorns, we are striving so much more to tell a story that doesn't just happen within the confines of those sort of more traditional story chapters. Right. Um, and as you look at the story journal this time, I think you're also gonna maybe be surprised to find out that we have some of these story instances that happened in those confined spaces, but we also are putting story steps out in the open world where you can encounter other NPCs, where you can encounter other player characters, and you get the chance to, while there are certain things that you are exploring, kind of in a step-by-step, -step, I'm going through this story that's being told in this portion of the open world, you have so much more ability to then go off to the side and explore other things for a while and understand how the story that's going on in the open world is really part and parcel of the whole thing and how yeah. it supports what's going on in the story instances and how the story instances lead to a lot of things that are going on in the open world. And we're really trying to do a much... Um, more thorough job of integrating those and I think it is it's it's absolutely a big step in that direction and something we're going to continue to do as a company as we sort of go on to you know the next steps of story and all of that kind of thing I I am excited to see it because yeah we do have open world steps and we do have more traditional instant steps yeah. um, that's and a nice job making all of this more cohesive as we go to everybody involved yeah absolutely it's it's something that the narrative team can't possibly accomplish on their own. This is part of, you know, narrative is working with design, is working with the audio, is working obviously with our cast, is working with art to make sure that there, 
you know, ideally isn't anything out in the open world that's contradicting something that's going on in the story and all of that and vice versa, that we really are working together. And, you know, it's it's quite a challenge because there's a lot of people who make this game um, and a lot of conversations out. that yeah. have to go on um, in the back and forth and, and trying to make sure that somebody has a great idea over here and they're working in right. a corner of a certain map and they start building on something and then we find out about it and we're like, oh, wow, that's really cool, but there's this one aspect of it that kind of goes counter to what we're doing mm -hmm. over here. Could we do this other thing with it? And, and when you start to have those moments, I think those are the things that people who are working on this game, those are the kind of things that get them super excited because right. they start to realize how everybody's ideas are contributing to this whole experience experience and how they are so interwoven and the more ways we can find to really weave them in together and to have things that just you start to seize upon these little opportunities to help pay off something that happened maybe in the more linear story that happens in the open right. world in a section and that's awesome like that's just super exciting when that comes together i think doing story for game development has there's an extra layer of complication because you have you have all of these pieces that need to fit together and you have all of these teams that are working together and you could have you could have an amazing story idea and present it to the rest of the team and you could be presenting something that the game engine there's no way can possibly be rendered so if you can get that working together well and you can get everybody working together and cooperating and bringing their ideas and making sure everything fits, you can come up with something really great. And I think that's what the, we're in the process of now. Yeah, absolutely. Which is just so exciting to see. The In order to make this all come together, it would mm -hmm. never have happened had there not at the outset of thinking about Heart of Thorns and looking at the production, getting all the different disciplines that go into the game sort of in the room talking about things at the same time and yeah. that from a very very early stage it's not that the narrative team always just completely decides oh we're going to start the story here we're going to hit these five beats right. and we're going to get to this end point yeah make it happen that's so not the way right. it can possibly happen because there are there are gameplay constraints there are engine constraints there's a whole bunch of other things but it's not even about the constraints design will come to us and say, you know what, we'd really love to do this kind of gameplay. Do you have something that would help us, you yeah. know, kind of, uh, is there something about the story that can go in that direction? And you all of a sudden find out, oh, this is a really nice marriage of these two things. Aww. And you wind up really working in that idea. And it, yeah. that, as much as anything, shapes kind of the totality of the story that you're telling. So it is, it's absolutely, like you said, Yeah, these more ideas complex. go in every direction. It's so much more complex and it is harder. You know, I, I used to work largely on story and stuff for TV. I can tell you, it's so much easier. Because, <laughs> you know, it is, it's just all about telling story. And it is, it's a straightforward narrative. The player can't choose what happens next, you know, in most instances. And so... Um, when you introduce that dynamic, it becomes so much harder, but it's so much more fun and so much more rewarding. The payoff is yeah. completely huge. Well, I'll tell you what, I have one more thing that I want to talk to you about. Okay. We have just a couple minutes as we wrap up. We've talked a lot about the Silvari and their effect on the gameplay, but we're not, we're meeting some other races that aren't playable races, but they do have a big impact on the gameplay and the story. Yeah. So I'm going to make you pick one. Oh, goodness. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> You know who I'll talk about, and they've gotten some, we've talked about them a bit in blogs, but you know what I want to talk about a bit is the Hylic. I will say the Yay. Hylic are so much fun, and what I will say to people who, when you've been, if you've been able to play the beta weekends, you've gotten a chance to get them to know them a little bit, but you haven't really seen how they can be integrated in the story, how they impact the story, and that sort of stuff. And in ArenaNet right now is part of our, like, we're trying to polish everything and make it as good as it can mm -hmm. be. Everybody in the company is playing this game, and I will say, we get so many really fun, positive comments about these tree frog folk. They are just a great blend of, they are allies, they come with their own really 
get most of them are allies. Intriguing and fun. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, Morty has the power to convert pretty much anybody to be it's sort of kind evil. Of a jerk. Yeah, I know. So I would say I think people are going to really enjoy the fun of these characters and getting to know them and their lifestyle and the fun. They live in these tree houses and they're these just tall, lanky frogs who have just such a knowledge and affection for the jungle mm -hmm. and it's been disrupted lately and you get to come in and sort of help be part of trying to help them find a solution. I think it's a really, it's a, it's a cool yeah. segment. So talk to them, find the, find the high look, find yeah. the it's little, hang out in the, hang out in their tree houses and talk to them, see what they have to say about the story. And you can do that in the upcoming beta weekend event for those who pre-purchase hot. We will see you in game. Thank you, Leah. Yeah. Thank All you right. so much. Bye guys. We'll be Bye. back in a bit.